In this video, I want to introduce the base rate fallacy. We're going to do this by looking at an example. Suppose that there was a cab that was involved in a hit and run accident at night. Suppose further that we know that there are two cab companies, the green and the blue. And these are the only cabs that operate in this city. Now let's suppose that 85% of the cabs in the city are green and 15% are blue. Now suppose that a witness identified the cab as blue and the court tested the reliability of the witness under the same circumstances that existed on the night of the accident and concluded the following. The witness correctly identified each one of the two colors 80% of the time and failed 20% of the time. That means that the witness is 80% reliable at identifying the color of the cab. So now the question is, what is the probability that the cab involved in the accident was blue rather than green? Knowing that this witness identified it as blue. So you have a witness, you're a juror, and you're, you hear this witness. The witness says it was a blue cab. You know that 85% of the cabs in the city are green. You know that 15% are blue. They're the only cabs in the city. And you know that the witness is 80% reliable. So now the question is, do you believe this witness? Do, do you assign, what probability do you assign to the fact that the cab that was involved in the accident was from the blue company? So take a moment and try to answer this question just intuitively for yourself. What, how would you, what, roughly what probability would you assign to the cab being blue? Now, in order to solve this problem formally, we need to apply Bayes' theorem. To do Bayes' theorem, we need to know what is the evidence and what's the hypothesis. So the evidence is that the witness identified the cab as being blue. The hypothesis is that the cab, a cab from the blue cab company was involved in the accident. Not H, then, is a cab from the green cab company was involved in the accident. So the question is, what is the probability of H given E? That is, what's the probability that it was a blue cab involved in the accident, given that the witness testified that it was a blue cab involved in the accident? Now, we need to assign probabilities to our events. So as we noted, 85% of the cabs in the city are green and 15% are blue. So that means the prior probability of H, a cab from the blue cab company was involved in the accident, is 0.15, and that the prior probability of not H then is, of course, 0.85. So there's an 85% chance it was a green cab and a 15% chance it was a blue cab. The reliability of the witness tells us what the likelihoods are. So the probability that the witness says that it was a blue cab given that it actually was a blue cab involved in the accident, is going to be 0.8. Given that it was a green cab, so given that it was not H was true, the probability that the witness said it was a blue cab is going to be 0.2. Because in this probability right here, in this likelihood, the witness was incorrect. It was a green cab that was involved, but the witness misidentified that. And that only happens 20% of the time. So there's an 80% chance that the witness correctly identified the color of the cab involved in the accident. Now, we've calculated what the prior probabilities and our likelihoods are, and that's enough to tell us how to calculate the probability of H given E. That is, the probability of E given H times the prior of H divided by the probability of E. Now, of course, we don't know what the probability of E is, but using the law of total probability, we know that if we multiply the probability of E given H times the probability of H and add that to the probability of not H times 
the likelihood of E given not H, that that gives you the probability of E. So by Bayes' theorem, we have this is the probability of H given E is going to be 0.8 times 0.15. That's the probability, the prior probability of H divided by the probability of E. So that's going to be 0.15 times 0.8. That's 0.15 times 0.8 plus 0.85 times 0.2. This is approximately 0.41. So there's about a 41% chance that, it, that the witness was correct, that it was a blue cab involved in the accident. But that means that there's a higher probability that it was a green cab involved in the accident. So the probability that not H is true, given the witness's testimony, we can calculate what that probability is. It's the probability of E given not H times the probability of not H divided by E. So again, we have the same calculation will give us the probability of E. But now we're looking at the probability of E given not H, that's 0.2, and the prior probability of not H, that's 0.85. So this gives us about a 59% chance that it was a green cap. Now, most people incorrectly say that given the witness's testimony, that it must be a blue cap. After all, the witness is 80% reliable. And what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is you're ignoring the prior probability how many green cabs there are in the city. There are just an overwhelmingly more green cabs there are in the city than blue cabs. And people typically downplay that information. So let's illustrate this further with the following graph. So what I have drawn here is the blue line is the probability that a blue cab was involved in the accident, given that the witness said it was a blue cab. The green line is the probability that it was a green cab, given that the witness said it was a blue cab. So remember, the witness, what we've drawn here, the witness always says it's a blue cab. And your question is, do you think it's more likely that it's a green cab that was actually involved in the accident, or more likely that it was a blue cab that was involved in the accident, given what the witness said? The x axis contains different prior probabilities of H. And H is the probability, the prior probability that it was a blue cab involved in the accident. So you can think of this as the proportion of blue cabs in the city. So if there are about less than 20% of the cabs in the city are blue, then regardless of the fact that the witness said it was a blue cab, you should believe that it was in fact a green cab. And that's because there aren't very many blue cabs overall. There's an overwhelming, there's lots and lots of green cabs. So that probability overwhelms the evidence that you get from this witness. But if there's more than 20%, more than 20% of the cabs are, are blue, then the witness, then you can go with the witness and you, you should believe or at least assign a higher probability to the fact that the blue cab was involved in the accident rather than the green cab. And if the witness's reliability goes down, so now the witness is only reliable 60% of the time, you can see that it's roughly less than, say, 45% of the cabs. If less than 45% of the cabs are blue, then you should still think that it must be a green, the green cab that was involved in the accident. But if there's more than about 45% of the cabs are blue, then the, you can, using the witness testimony, you can come to believe that it must be a blue cap that was involved in the accident. So this is the base rate fallacy. The base rate fallacy is the tendency of people to discount the prior probability of your hypothesis. So you're given some evidence for this hypothesis H. So you've observed something or you have some testimony a report from, from an expert, 
and you want to know what is the probability of H given this new evidence. Well, using Bayes' theorem, we know that it's the likelihood of the evidence given the hypothesis times the prior probability of H. And people tend to discount or give more weight to event-specific information, namely the likelihood, than we should. And sometimes you just simply ignore base rate. So the lesson is, don't ignore the base rate. That's crucial to understanding how you should update your probabilities in response to some evidence.